Hi everyone, I hope you're well and first off thank you very much for all of the positive feedback you guys continue to give me. It does take an awful lot of time to produce these videos. The last printing video was just a complete nightmare. I basically spent three days on it trying to record and then re-record and be clear and then struggling with mic problems and edits and yeah it was, uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, most of them aren't that bad fortunately but even sifting through images and looking for good examples to produce concise videos is, uh, is actually quite time consuming. So uh, having that feedback does keep me motivated to produce more content for you guys and hopefully the channel will snowball over time. So I did get some good feedback for a quite technical video I made last week on the Lightroom highlights and shadow sliders. So it was a technical deep dive into what those sliders actually did. And in a similar vein, I'm going to produce more geeky videos. I'm going to call it the Photographer's Geek Out. So it's gonna be a whole series of videos, not just on image editing, although this one will be on the black and white sliders in Lightroom, but on other technical subjects too. So just having a bit of fun with the technical geeky stuff in photography, the kind of stuff that you don't need to know, but might want to know, might find interesting. Um, and maybe that background info will actually give you some confidence when you're using these tools as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that logo. This is the second in the series. I'll make that highlights and shadow slider video the first in the series. Um, and with that said, let's get started. These are the two sliders we're going to talk about, the whites and blacks sliders. And just before I get started, it's worth saying that the edits that you see here are for example purposes for illustrating what the tools do. They're not supposed to be taken as an example of how I would edit the images myself. So please do bear that in mind. If I'm doing some crazy edits, it's quite often just to show you what these tools are doing. So they're actually used for two reasons, but commonly people will use the whites and and black sliders to change the brightness of the brightest and darkest tones respectively. So in the case of the white slider, if I slide this to the right, then you can see that the brightest tones get a lot brighter quite quickly, whereas the mid-tones and shadows get brighter at a much slower rate. So it sort of targets those brightest tones. And similarly, if I move it to the left, it will darken those brightest tones more than it darkens the rest of the image. But it is having an effect image wide. So in contrast to the highlight slider, it isn't masked. It will affect all of the tones in the image. Similarly for the black slider, if I move that to the left, you can see the darkest tones get darkest, but actually all of the tones in the image are affected. And obviously if I move to the right, then those darkest tones get brighter. So again, that is not like the shadow slider because it's actually having an effect on the entire image, albeit the bigger effect is happening to those darker tones. The second purpose is to set white and black points. And I haven't touched on that much on this channel, and I will be doing a separate video on it because I think it's a very important concept. But just to very briefly explain it here, it's basically a method for making sure that your image uses the full tonal range it has available to it. So making sure that there's something that's very close to pure black in the image and very close to pure white in the image. Uh, so that would be equivalent to stretching the histogram so that it touched on the left and touched on the right too. So that's setting white and black points. Of course, you wouldn't actually want to do that on every image. And actually, this is a case of an image where you wouldn't want to set a black point uh, because you've got a lot of atmospheric haze here and it would just look weird if you, you set a black point. Uh, but this is the image we're going to use for these examples. So firstly, what I've done is try to cut through some of this haze using some contrast adjustments and adjusting the white balance. Go back to my white balance videos if you want to know why I adjusted the white balance when I added the contrast. It was to counteract the blue color cast. Um, so I've already made quite a few edits to this uh, and added a lot of contrast, but this is going to be our starting point from now on out. And what I've done is I've moved the black and white sliders by plus and minus 50. So this is minus 50 black, this is plus 50 black, this is minus 50 white, and this is plus 50 white. And then I'm going to open these in Photoshop and see what they're actually doing. <laughs> 
In this Photoshop file, I have all of those Lightroom adjustments loaded into these various folders, and we're going to talk through them one by one. What I've tried to do is recreate the adjustment uh, by changing the unedited file, so the, the file without the, say, blacks minus 50 adjustment, and changing that original file into something that looks almost identical to the adjusted file using a curves adjustment. So here's the blacks minus 50 adjustment, and here's the original. You can see there's quite a difference there. And then I've created a curves adjustment that very closely mimics that blacks minus 50 adjustment and that's that there. So if I turn off that adjusted combination of layers then we can compare the two. So that's the blacks minus 50 adjustment and that's my attempt to recreate it using curves and I'll just turn it on and off as I talk about one difference between the two and that's really mostly that the colors are just very fractionally different. You can see a slight change in both hue and saturation and it's very very slight particularly if you compare it to the degree of change that that curves adjustment makes from a tonal perspective. Uh, but Lightroom is doing something slightly clever there with the colors, um, so I can't perfectly replicate uh, that adjustment using just the, uh, the curves adjustment here. But I think we can safely say that this very accurately represents what that, uh, that blacks adjustment is doing. So let's talk through this curve and, and explain what's actually going on here. Now, curves are very important and I need to do another separate video on exactly what curves do. Uh, but hopefully you guys are watching these geeky videos because you're kind of, uh, you know, into this sort of thing anyway and have a decent understanding of, of what curves are, but I am just going to quickly go over it um, and introduce a new concept uh, because I, I think you'll find that helpful. So we have the input tone along the bottom X axis here and of course an image histogram showing which portions of, of the image effectively are of a certain tone. So we have a small number of highlights, a much larger number of shadows, this bottom area down here, deep shadows, and then a lot of mid-tones and, and dark mid-tones and light mid-tones. So that's the image histogram um, and the input tone, like I said, along the X axis, the output tone that we're changing our input tones to uh, is along this Y axis. And the transformation of input tone to output tone is determined by the curve here. So the curve is the name given to this line that I've created. So what you would do is say, take your mid gray here and read up to the line and then across and you can see that it's become very slightly darker. You can count squares if that's helpful and you can basically apply that logic to the entirety of the curve. If the curve just lies along this 45 degree line here then nothing changes at all. If it's below the line then anything below the line is darkened, anything above it is lightened. So we can actually uh, talk through this and, and think about what this curve is actually doing to this image and, and therefore talk logically about what this blacks adjustment has done. So let's start in, in the midtones and all of the midtones are getting darker. The highlights are getting darker but less. So everything's being darkened, the midtones by a fair bit. But actually, as we get into the shadows, you see that the darkening is happening increasingly more. And actually, um, if you look at this in terms of, of ratios, then it really gets quite extreme quite quickly. If we look at where this point is here, then roughly speaking, it's three squares across, but it's ended up at two squares away from pure black. So it's got about 50% darker. And then if we look at this point here, then we were about one and a half squares away from pure black, but we've ended up less than half a square away from pure black. So this point at this point here, we're getting three times darker. And of course, you can see that actually in the image when you apply this adjustment, because these dark shadows here become pretty close to black. So that's what the curve is actually doing. But there's another concept that I want you to, to get a handle on with these curves, and that's the idea that the steepness of the curve is analogous to contrast. So if we look at the curve here and compare it to that 45 degree line, for the majority of the curve, it's actually got steeper. And what that means is we're adding a little bit of contrast to the majority of the image. 
but in the shadow area here you can see that that curve actually gets flatter so we're smushing the shadows together they're all getting quite close to black and there's less differentiation between them than there was before we started with our adjustment so if you if you have that idea of curves that the steeper the curve the more contrasty that area of tones is and the shallower the curve, the less contrasty, then we start to get a good handle on what these sliders are actually doing. So let's talk through the rest of the adjustments. So this is the blacks plus 50 curve here, and I've got the original blacks plus 50 file, and then here is the original on top. So if we compare the two, then you can see that the original is darker because, of course, we've lifted the brightness of the blacks. And then I've created an adjustment that mimics that correction. So if I turn the, the group on and off, then you can see that, again, I've very closely matched what's happened, particularly tonally. Uh, again, you can see a very slight color difference between the two, but most of that change is in the tonal correction. And what we see is that it's the same shape of curve, but sort of mirrored across that 45 degree line. So if we read into what's happening here, then our blacks are getting, let's say in the case of this point here, we're just over one square away from pure black and we're ending up two squares away from pure black. So let's say we've got 70% brighter there. Uh, really close to black, well, we're half a square away and we've got to a square away. So we've got twice as bright near black. Um, and then as, as we go along, you can see actually that that uh, adjustment gets less and less significant. So the mid-tones, yes, we're brightening them, but not nearly as much as the shadows uh, and the highlights even less so. So we're hardly affecting the highlights. Um, we are affecting the mid-tones, but the biggest change is happening in those shadows. And if we look at the steepness of the curve, we're actually increasing the contrast in the shadow area. So let's turn that adjustment on and off and you can actually see the tree definition uh, sort of coming out a bit more. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have any true blacks, as in all three colour channels are, are black in, in this area here. Um, so it's maybe not quite as clear as it could be because, of course, everything gets brighter as well. But uh, I think you can see there that, that the trees are better defined. They're easier to see. So we've increased the contrast in the near blacks. Um, but the rest of the curve is actually less steep than it was before. So we've reduced the contrast in the rest of the image. So that's the blacks plus 50 adjustment. Now let's have a look at the whites and unsurprisingly it's the same shape of curve but uh, slightly different. So here's the whites plus 50 adjustment and here is the original. So I'll turn those on and off. So whites plus 50 and then original. And then I've replicated it again with a curves adjustment and then if I turn the group off you can see just how closely I've mimicked it. Uh, again, very slight difference in colour, um, but nothing particularly major. And here is that curves adjustment. So in this case, what's happened is we've brightened the brightest tones a lot more than the rest of the tones in the image. So we can do the same kind of counting business. We could take this two away from pure white here, and we can see that it ends up one away from pure white. So you could say that we've doubled the brightness in these brightest tones. Um, but that effect gets less and less and less as we move into the darker tones. And if you look at the steepness of the curve, you see that we have less contrast in the highlights area because it's a shallow curve there, whereas it's steeper everywhere else. So let's see if we can actually spot that as I turn this adjustment on and off. Well, you can see that there is much better definition in the cloud without the adjustment on. That's because it has more contrast, because when we add that adjustment, we're reducing the contrast in that area and it's looking quite washed out and you know it doesn't help that it's got brighter as well but the contrast has certainly been reduced and in the rest of the image you can visibly see that the contrast is better before the adjustment than uh, sorry after the adjustment than before it so here you do have much better differentiation say between the highlights here and the shadows than you do before it so that's the whites plus 50 adjustment and then finally the whites minus 50 same deal so here's the original um, on top of the whites minus 50 so whites minus 50 original adjustment and let's have a look at what that curve does so i'm just going to turn the group off 
and on again so you can see that they're very very similar one key difference is in the cloud here so you see much better color in the lightroom version and that's because it has access to the to the raw data so it's kind of got a better histogram to work with i was trying to darken a bit of sky that was kind of already blown out with my 16-bit file here in Photoshop. So that's why there's that color difference and it is more significant there. But obviously from a tonal perspective, it's almost identical. And so we can have a look at that curve and, and talk about what's happening. Well, we've added contrast this time in the highlights. That curve has become steeper, whereas the contrast is reduced elsewhere in the image. So if we turn that on and off, then you can actually see better cloud definition um, as I turn this layer on and off so you can really see the structure of the cloud starting to become more visible as I do that. Uh, and as for the general effect, of course, we're darkening those brightest tones far more than the mid-tones and the shadows. I mean, you've really got the idea by now. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of exactly what is happening when you apply those blacks and whites adjustments. So now let's go through some, some practical examples in Lightroom. Just before we skip on to some new examples, let's look at this image one last time and this time at the image histogram, which I'm going to enlarge so you can see a bit better. And I've turned on the clipping warnings at the top left and top right of that histogram so that we can see when we clip to either white or black in any particular color channel. And what I'm going to do is start by moving the white slider off to the right. And as I do that, if you look at the right hand side of the histogram, you'll see that rather than clipping to white, rather than having it touch that right hand side, it's actually just increasingly bunching it up. So it's smushing those highlights together as I said earlier we're losing that contrast it's becoming washed out but what we're never doing is clipping to white until we go to a really really extreme adjustment and, and that's when the clipping starts to happen in the sky there and you've just completely lost all definition in that cloud it's completely washed out uh, so this is a really bad image to use the white slider to set a white point whereas if you use the curves tool here which is different to the Photoshop curves tool which I would actually use myself um, it gives a much much better result so you can see there's lovely color and definition left in that cloud if you set the white point here so that's where the clipping starts so I just dial it back very slightly it's just a much much better approach to setting a white point for this image uh, and then if we do the same with the black, so let's look at the histogram again, and I'm moving the black slider to the left until I set a black point. And similarly, you can see it, it just smushes into that left-hand side. All of the tones get closer and closer together. And actually the histogram is rescaling now because all of those tones are all bunching together on the far left-hand side and the peaks becoming massive. And now we've got the highlights warnings uh, going off on the uh, histogram itself, but we're not actually seeing that clipping warning appearing on the image at all, even with a minus 100 adjustment. So we've gone all the way over to the, the left and we now can't see anything going on in the shadows whatsoever. However, um, so that's why blacks again wouldn't be a good method for setting a black point in this image and if we do it with the curves then you can see that we do get blacks down there uh, but we have lots of good shadow definition too still so this image in particular would be a very poor choice to use those sliders uh, to set white and black points but the reason that a lot of people recommend it is because most of the time it just doesn't matter at all so uh, this is a photo i took in greenland on the fly um, kind of literally actually a bit of a bit of a pun there because i'm being eaten alive by uh, mosquitoes so that's what you see blurred in the sky there so you can forgive the wonky horizon so uh, we're going to just do a quick edit here so let's boost the shadows and add a bit of contrast to make the flowers pop and so on maybe slightly brighten the exposure um, boost boost the shadows a little bit more that's already starting to look good uh, add a little bit of vibrance maybe uh, and now we're going to set some white points and black points so let's move the white slider until we start to see some clipping and okay, we've got a bit of clipping in the in the snow there at the back. So let's stop there. And we've hardly moved that white slider at all. So we've hardly pushed those highlights together because we just haven't taken the adjustment very far. And what about the blacks? Well, actually, we've already got black clipping appearing in the image. So we don't need to move that 
at all. So in this case, because we've hardly moved the sliders, it doesn't really matter what we're using them for. And that's honestly going to be the case with lots of images. If you're not using these sliders to their extreme, then you're not really going to see that problem appearing very much. So here, let's maybe gra uh, create a, a grad adjustment over the foreground and just brighten it a little bit just before we get started with any other adjustments. Let's uh, darken down the highlights and boost the shadows and add a bit of contrast and yeah, maybe boost those shadows a bit more, boost the exposure a little bit, just going back and forth with those adjustments. And this is looking quite good, but let's make sure we have white points and black points. Well, actually, if we move the white point to the right here, yeah, we. I mean, it takes a while for us to get clipping and by that point, we've completely washed out any blue that was left in the sky. So honestly, we probably never would move the slider that far, but this wouldn't be a good image to set a white point clearly because it has that horrible effect on the sky. So let's dial that back. And then what about blacks? Well, let's move that off to the left until we get some clipping. And there we go. It's clipping there in the shadows of the moss. So one thing you'll find quite commonly with landscape photographs is that your deepest shadows are in your foreground if you have one and that's because there's no atmospheric haze between you and the subject so the contrast is best in that area and hence the shadows are deepest and uh, honestly if you make those shadows black you will very very rarely be moving that black slider uh, at all or, or if you do you'll be moving at a very small distance and that's why this compression together of the shadow detail again just isn't really going to matter that much because the effect isn't that extreme. So onto an example here where you really um, wouldn't want to set the white point using the white slider so I've already applied this adjustment but I'm just shifting the whites until that clipping starts to appear there on the right. And then I'm going to uh, try and do a similar adjustment, but this time by setting a white point with the curves. So if I shift this off to the left until it starts to clip, and I'm just looking for that same area. Um, I'm not going to spend the time doing this exactly, but let's say, okay, that's pretty, pretty damn close. Um, so if we compare those two, you can see that the highlight detail in the second version where I set the whites using the curves adjustment is, is far, far better. So there's that sense of dappled light striking this snow slope here. Uh, so it would be a much better choice. And, and the reason why it's doing a better job is simply that it's not compressing these highlights together. In fact, it's doing the opposite. So the, the curve is steeper. So it's actually pulling that highlight information apart. It's creating contrast in the highlights. And finally, on to this rather lovely morning out in the Drakensberg looking over a cloud inversion. And here I've set the whites so that you can just see that tiny bit of clipping there on the right hand side. But I've lost so much of the colour in the sky. And if I wanted to set a white point for this image, then again, I would use the curves tool or maybe levels or curves in Photoshop. Um, because that just gives a much, much better result. There's a much better retention of colour. The gradients look a lot nicer. So comparing the two, there is there is no comparison. And in fact, in reality, with this image, again, I might not actually set a white point. So always worth remembering that you don't always want to set these white points and black points because you can spoil your images uh, just as easily. Anyway, that's the whites and black slider. Uh, so that's the whole lot of the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks done in these two videos. And I think those are maybe the the four most interesting but also complex uh, tools to understand in in Lightroom in that in that basic panel anyway. So hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, this is episode two of uh, the Photographer's Geek Out. So if you've got any other ideas for episodes, I'm all ears. I do have quite a number listed already, but uh, always happy to hear your suggestions. And uh, please do subscribe if you want to see more content from me. There's a notification bell you're supposed to press as well so that you know when I've posted a video, if you're constantly wired to your computer and, and whatever. Yeah, so uh, click that uh, subscribe button at least and maybe, maybe leave the notification bell for another time.